<laughs> Welcome to Crashing with Friends. My name is Kyle Hobbs, your host. This week I'm joined by Connor Hobbs hey. and David Lindsay. Hey, yo. Hey, what's up, guys? Not a whole lot. Well, not a whole lot of people. Not a whole lot of people, that's right. <laughs> Just the three of us. We can make it if we try. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, we were going to have John Herbert on this week. But uh, he got sick. Well, John, and so did Jackson. He got sick as well. That's how it goes, man. The mm-hmm. show must go on. Mm-hmm. But uh, at least I've got these guys with me. Yeah, get better, guys. Yep. <laughs> they didn't get the dope COVID strain either, <laughs> unfortunately. And this was going to be the uh, rap episode. So <laughs> next week, look forward to the rap episode. Yep. Something to uh, get you hyped. Yeah, I'm going to be throwing some fat raps at you guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. It'll be almost as good as the Impression Wars episode. Uh, oh, I've got a feeling it won't be. But uh. <laughs> Just impersonate that you're a good rapper and you'll be all right. Yeah. Now, I, I, are we going to have somebody like clapping for like a beat or are we coming? You like, could, yeah. You can do whatever you want, you man. Can have, yeah. We'll be like, want, hey, man. Kyle, I got this thing I wrote. Can you plug it along with my thing or no? Does that not work? Uh, what do you mean? Like, it, can I add a add like audio a, later or yeah. something? Or, yeah, I think so. Oh, maybe I won't do that. Maybe I'll just be like, Connor, give me a beat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do it. Yeah, do whatever you want, David. I'm sure I can make it work. Whatever it is. Yeah, I was like looking into some software because I was gonna like you know make a little beat that I could rap to, and then the software that I downloaded had like a few tones, and none of them were a, an actual drum tone. So I'm like, well, if I can't even put a drum tone down, like, how am I going to make a, a rap song? Yeah, you know? right. So I got I to gotta do a little bit more research and find all that. Get a clap tone, you know. But I'm cool with doing it just, you know, just rapping it out. I don't need a beat, like, you know. Just, <laughs> just freestyle just it. Give it, yeah, hit it. <laughs> and you said yours is like 45 seconds long, something like that? It's like 45 seconds as Dang, it is now. My, mine's I'm, like, oh, sorry, continue. I might make it. I might make I might make a few adjustments to it, you know, yeah. just depending. But like the way I want to say it, it, yeah, it's like about forty five seconds. So yeah, of quality material. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you have any? Uh, no, I, I I'm still brainstorming. Like I've got I think I've got the concept laid out in my mind. Are I'm you gonna put brainstorm on. with Mandy and stuff? Me and Rachel did. And Maybe she because I would. It was fun because I would come down with. Th- I would make up a line and then she would write the hook of that line, or I would come up with the first line and then she would come up with the hook of it. She yeah. did. She, it was so much fun. We did it for like probably an <laughs> hour. Said and the half. same thing twice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, whatever, dude. I tend to do that. Either she would come up with the hook of it on it, or I come up with it. No. <laughs> yeah, whatever. You know, that's so, what you're supposed to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah, we might. We've we've brainstormed. Actually, we've come up with a couple topics that I brought on the show together because I was like, I don't know what the hell to bring to the show tonight, and she's like, Why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? Why don't you do this? And most of them are throwaways. But <laughs> <laughs> my theme was. Uh, Crashing with friends intro, so that's kind of what I went with. Mm. Pretty good. I, I don't want to give out any more information. You guys might try to steal something or whatever. Yeah, know, so. <laughs> yeah. Mine pretty much just explains my life from start to finish, kind of like a little thing. And yeah, it's good. okay. Now that we're having an extra week, I'm <clears throat> now that I'm got an extra week, I'm gonna probably try to add to it more. And okay, yeah, cool. Look forward to it, people. <laughs> yeah, stay tuned. <laughs> so, uh, David, how's your week been, man? Good, man. I'm tired. Yeah. I've been having to get up earlier and earlier, like, the last few weeks since Mandy started working. Mm-hmm. And with, like, running and shit, like, the, the run is in two days, the memorial run. So by the time this airs, it will be the Saturday before the day there, that you're hearing this. <laughs> uh so I'm, I'm getting pumped up for that. <clears throat> what day is the race again? You said May 6th? May 7th. 7th, okay. Yeah, Saturday, May 7th. So 6.30 in the morning, I should be coming across the finish line at like 9-ish, maybe. Depending on how long I s- sit around at the watering stations and stuff. So 
say like nine to nine thirty, I'll be coming across the finish line. But they sent the pictures out of the medals, dude, and like this one is is huge. It's like probably I don't know four by six inches, maybe four by eight, something like that. It's it's pretty sizable and it's gold. And then like they've got all the medals for for all the other races too. They're kind of smaller and some are silver, or bronze, or whatever. But everybody gets a medal that participates. It just depends on which run you do. So, are you doing the longest run or? Yeah, yeah. Well, they only they only offer a half, which, I mean, I wouldn't do the full even if they had it because I'd probably need like six months to train for that or something. That's twenty six miles. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Can't start, people actually do that, man. It's crazy. <laughs> I know, dude. Uh, I started going back to the gym again too. I I took a break because running and stuff was just eating up all my time, but. Uh, I downloaded this app called Fitbod. Actually, I don't know if you've heard of it, but you can like tailor your workout to what you want to achieve. Like you know whether you're trying to bulk or tone or just lose weight or whatever, and then you kind of tell it what equipment you have available, and then it will tailor your workouts so you're not like overworking certain muscle groups. And it's like if you're doing toning, it'll do like low weight, high reps, like circuit training or or supersets or whatever. And you could tell it how many days a week you want to work out. And I I went Monday and just shredded my chest and my triceps and my abs. And then, like, haven't gone back this week because I'm still so sore from that first day <laughs> that I I'm like, it. crap, I might have to, like, e- ease into it. But Does this app cost money or anything? Yeah, <laughs> it's it's free for the first three days, the first three workouts. And then it's, like, I think it's 10 bucks a month or something, but... I'm I'm just gonna give it a shot for like a month, and then honestly, I'm probably just gonna use it to get some ideas to figure out like what I should be doing, and then once I figure that out, I could probably write my own thing. But right, like my old my oldest brother Isaac's doing it, so he was like, "Anybody want to do this shit with me?" <laughs> cool. Uh, he's on this carnivore diet too, dude. Have you heard of this shit? Uh. Uh-uh. I mean, it, it is what it it is what it's it sounds like basically just eating meat or, or like eggs or whatever like. But you have to eat crazy shit to get the nutrients that you need that you're not getting from, like, vegetables. So you have to eat, like, liver from several different types of animals. You have to eat, like, pork bone marrow and stuff. Like, <laughs> you got to go out of your way to eat some nasty shit. Because, That's crazy, And I'm dude. like, why don't you just eat a cucumber, man? Like, <laughs> What's your problem, man? Yeah. Yeah. So it's... He keeps trying to get me to do it. And I'm like, I'm, I, I'm not doing that, man. Like, yeah. Ugh. Hey, so see, like... A cheeseburger, you know? Yeah. Just take the patty off of it. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Connor, what about you, man? How's your week been? Pretty good. Pretty, pretty, pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd say. Um, I got my grill yesterday. Your what? My grill. They want to see your what? My grill. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, every time you're gonna see me uh, smiling, I'll be like, Duh. both both teeth, you know, <laughs> like how rappers do. Could you guys see both ends of the grill? I don't know. I thought you meant like a cooking grill. I was like, oh, no, you got your grill. Dude. I got my grill, dude. Your smart smile. My grill. It's pretty smart. My grill, <laughs> dog. Yeah. I'm I'm learning things from it. Yeah. It's uh, it's pretty cool. They gave me um, some experimental tech. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's like uh, this new thing where <clears throat> you like, it's a mouth vibrator. That's that's the only way to put it. Um, <laughs> nice. It's like a U shaped attached to like a little like white, almost like a ball thing. That's the vibrator slash charger port or whatever. It's mm-hmm. got one button on it that just activates it for five minutes. I'm supposed to do that every night. I'm supposed to like loosen the ligaments in your teeth or something. Weird. So yeah, it it definitely makes your head vibrate to the point where it's just like I'm just gonna lay back. You know, like, <laughs> I'm not gonna try to do anything right now. Is that like really weird? Like when you when you look at like a digital clock and like the the letters are like wiggling back right. and forth kind yeah. of deal. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. It's like the back of my skull is vibrating, so I'm just gonna lay yeah. down. <laughs> <Ride it up. laughs> <laughs> oh um, my gosh! <laughs> but uh, they're they're super cool about it. I was in there for like an hour, you know. Um, they had to put some like 
tooth colored dots on my on some of my teeth to help them move or whatever. And still uh, trying to get used to talking. I sound like an idiot most of the time now. So, <laughs> I, did, I didn't even notice yeah, until you, you brought it up. You don't notice unless you sit there and really, really try to focus on your talking. You yeah. don't notice it. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. I had no idea until so, you just said it. I'm like, you keep like hitting in a weird way. Like, you know, because there's like, there's more bulk in my mouth now because oh, of all yeah. the stuff, you know, so it's like, eh. But uh, yeah, good week. Um, watched The Gentleman on Netflix, which I highly recommend. To all of you at home to watch that. If you like gangster movies, uh, oh, okay. Matthew McConaughey at his best. Sweet. Um, a lot of funny, like offbeat stuff for a like a crime gangster movie, you know. And uh, one of my favorite parts of anything I've seen all year is in that movie. Um, you'll know it when you see it. That's all I gotta say. You'll you'll know it when you see it. It's just a uh, a very cool thing that happens in that movie. But aside from that, it's just, I thought it was a great movie. So I give it like a 9 out of 10 for sure. Really? Yeah, yeah I, I have a score, I go, huh? I go 9 out of 10. Damn. Damn. It's right. got Charlie Hunnam in it, too. I really like him. It's got <coughs> Hugh Grant in it. Yeah, Hugh Grant's Colin a freak Farrell. in that movie. Just look at the cast. Colin Farrell was great. Yeah. It's got Eddie Marsden. Sweet. Yeah, I think I saw this on Netflix the other day and was like, I really want to see that. So Yeah. Check it out. It's cool. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. I think that's most of what I've done. Played some Destiny. Um, shoot. Man. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, I thought I did something else, but I didn't. So. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so, like, obnoxious when a new Destiny patch comes out. Like, it's so enjoyable, but... You really got to spend time like grinding and grinding and grinding to get like your your level capped or at least close to cap so you can do like the end game stuff and you you don't warn yourself ahead of time like hey you're going to have to like stop playing other stuff for a little while or at least cut back on like other things and like I was just like realizing the other day I'm like man I have only been playing Destiny for like the last 2 or 3 weeks which yep. <laughs> it's a commitment man <clears throat> yeah it is yeah, it's a good time though. Yeah, I was gonna say, luckily the gameplay is rock solid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and the story's cool. I was I was playing Crucible this morning because uh, I didn't I didn't I haven't got my stuff done since the reset on Tuesday, and I was playing uh, um, Survival. And dude, I just moved up to another rank. Like right when I woke up, I won a match. It was like a four and oh, won a match, and then I went up to the next rank, and then I lost zero oh and four three times in a row. And I was so mad, dude. I was like, I'm never playing this game again. Yeah. <laughs> and then I was like, wait, I can just play PvE stuff. Never mind. <laughs> like, yeah. But, dude, it was like the, you the other night, dude, when you guys were playing that control match or whatever you guys were doing. You were like, dude, screw this. I'm just going to watch this game. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I didn't I didn't go in with the right guns. So I'm just sitting there getting obliterated. I'm like, yeah. right, I'm just going to hide in the corner. I, I don't really care how the outcome of this happens. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah in it has mind. no bearing on my life. Yeah. My, mine was like bounties. So it was like get so many kills with an auto rifle and I could have done that in control. Right. But I had already done all my control matches. So I was like, I'll just do a survival because I have to win matches anyway. And I'm trying to get kills with an auto rifle in survival. And it's just, you just got to go into it thinking if you're doing bounties that you're okay with losing, man. You Mm -hmm. know, same with gambit. If you're doing bounties, you got to be okay with losing. Yeah. Because otherwise you're not using your best guns. That's just how it is. You're right. It's frustrating. (laughs) good game though man really yeah. excited for the next season it's gonna have like a new dungeon Sweet. and also you can like farm the raids they'll have like a weekly raid that's like i guess featured or something so yeah i think cool. i think i'm gonna buy the 30th anniversary stuff when i get paid that way i can do that dungeon and get gallarhorn and shit yeah <laughs> that thorn armor is sweet dude mm-hmm. make it into ornaments oh yeah yeah it is cool would you uh would you do this week kyle um did I do this week? Just uh, watching some movies, um, playing some games like normal. I watched this movie called The Hunt. It's pretty good. And pretty much, it's um, a movie where these people get kidnapped by these elites, and they just get hunted. And yeah. It's pretty good, pretty good movie. It's it's one of those movies where at the beginning of the movie you think, oh, it's definitely gonna be about this chick, 
And then within the first five seconds, she's the first one that gets killed. Like a, well, <laughs> like a well-known actress that you've seen before. And then the next one, it's this guy from... Do you guys remember the guy who played uh, Green Arrow in this in Smallville? Yeah. And he's also yes. in that show, This Is Us, I believe. Yeah. It's like... What's, do you remember what his name is? Blonde dude. Yeah. The blonde uh, dude. Yeah, he does the voices. No, never mind. He does do a lot of voices in the DC, <laughs> yeah, the DC yeah, shows. Yeah, he does. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> it, it, after she dies, it switches over to him. You think, this is gonna, this is going to be the main this character. Is, and he instantly gets killed. He steps on a landmine. <laughs> and I was like, wow, this is, this is going to be an interesting movie. It was pretty interesting. It's just a movie about a person trying to survive get to the end you know and kill the people who are trying to kill them those movies are always not you know pretty pretty good yeah, yeah. most of the time yeah. yeah there's always something to love about them <laughs> yeah um that was pretty good my wife really wanted me to watch that um and then we've been watching ozark a lot we're still have about two or three episodes left we'll probably finish that in the next day or two Ozark? Yeah. Oh, man, we haven't started it. That was the thing I was trying to think about. Yeah. Did you finish it? um, I finished season two. I'm on season three, episode one right now. Oh, man, so you're not all the way caught up? No, I just started watching it like Saturday. Holy shit, dude. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. So what did you think about the season finale, episode two? Or season season, two? Season two, yeah. Um, Without giving it away and spoiling anything... um, I thought the characters that died in that episode were was pretty crazy. Yeah, you had fucking two main characters die, like one of them within the first five minutes, and the whole time I was screaming to myself, "Why are you talking to that dude by yourself at this creek? Like you know it's gonna happen." And oh yeah, it's like okay, boom, that happens, and then mm-hmm. the the death after that, I'm just like, I wasn't expecting that. Yeah. <laughs> That was pretty cool. Um, <laughs> but yeah, a lot of wild stuff. Um, I, I like the show, you know. I'd, I'd say the portrayal of Missouri is about as blue as you would expect. So they yeah. got that part right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you guys are really blue right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All these lights. Yeah. Man, I don't know. It is one of the bluest uh, TV shows I've ever seen. They use that blue filter hard, man. Oh, man. There's a few scenes where it's like, oh, that kind of looks like a normal Missouri day. But then, like, everything that's close range is, like, all blue. It's like, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the forest looks normal, but everything close looks blue. I don't get it. Like, perpetual shade and, like, overcast, you know? Like, I don't get that. But, yeah. Um, you definitely, I'd say, for real, though, what they do accurately portray is some of the uh, trailer trash that I've seen around here. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that kind of shit's real. <laughs> yeah. so. Speaking of trailer trash, man, that takes me into my first topic. Great segue. Yeah. Let's talk about some trailer park stories that some crazy stories that <laughs> happened to us when we were kids, man. Okay. Since we don't trailer have that much to talk stories. about this week. Um, I just remember all the times that there was tornadoes in the trailer park. That was one of the main yeah. things that stuck that out scary. to me. Yeah. Uh, the one time that I remember that was well, probably one of the craziest ones was we were, we had bunk beds our whole life, and then we ended up just breaking them apart and making them into two beds, but we had bunk beds our whole life, and one one year was tornado season, and I remember we were laying in bed, and it felt like we were on a roller coaster. It was wild, dude. The house is rocking back and forth, and then in return, our bunk beds are rocking back and forth. Like it was just like, cool yeah, it was just like, you know, it was just all over the place. Like getting bucked out of bed. God, yeah. The whole room was just lit up white, you know, from the outside being so white outside, and I remember, boom! At one time, our window, both our windows, just shatter. Yeah, and. Dang. Yeah, it was like either something had went through our window and shattered it or something like that, but they both shattered, and it was just like a freeze-frame moment. You know, I just remember glass in the air and white everywhere, and our and our curtains, like, blowing, you know? Yeah, and then praying to God that we weren't going to die. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, God, no. no. <laughs> yeah, I remember listening. <laughs> <laughs> How old yeah. were you guys when that happened? <coughs> Nine or ten, something like that. Yeah, it couldn't have been more than like eleven or so twelve. It was like probably 
right before I met you guys then, probably. Yeah. 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 The trailer had been moved a few feet, and then all the windows in our parents' car had gotten blown out. Dang. Well, I remember I met you guys, and you were living on the, like, west side of the trailer park, but only for a little while before you got the new one that was closer to the entrance. (laughs) Yeah, it was like 42 and then 20. Yeah. Right? Yeah, we, we lived at 42 for like four or five years, probably. Was that the one that got hit then? Yeah. Yeah. It's also the one that had the, uh, there was like a moonlight in my parents' uh, bedroom in their uh, bathroom, like mm-hmm. that was connected. And that thing just rotted out over the years to the point where it was just completely falling down. Dude, I, I don't care how good your trailer is, man. It's going to fall apart so fast. Oh, yeah. Like, it's just, that's just the nature of it, dude. Yeah. Like, well, I mean, I'm sure if you bought like a five hundred thousand dollar trailer, it might not. But you know what I mean. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, the quality, <laughs> especially the ones that we moved into, <clears throat> just they weren't yeah. high. You know. Yeah, just and there there are nice trailers old. out there to be there said. Are, yeah. yeah. But you got to buy it new. Yeah, like like the like the one that we moved into, it was like the the newest one that they bought and just set like there wasn't enough room in the park, so they just set it up the road. It was like it was really nice, but I'm sure it's not nice anymore. (laughs) (laughs) I like when I was like 16 or I was probably 17 or 18 actually. I moved into that trailer. Oh yeah, you told me I lived there for a little while with my friends. Did a bunch of stupid stuff and then got. I watched my friend get served. <laughs> like I'd never seen anybody get served before. Yeah. This guy was just sitting there waiting at the front door, and he handed him papers, and he's like, "Here you go." Mm-hmm. <laughs> it was crazy. Mm. Speaking of my a trailer we lived in, it was right across the street from their their hay barn, right? Yeah. And I I brought this up before, but you guys remember when we got blamed for setting it on fire? Right. Have we talked about I, them in the podcast? I think so. Uh, no, we haven't talked about it. No, yet. no. Okay, I was going to talk about that this, during this yeah. one. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, we used to play on it and stuff, and I mean, it was like what it was probably thirty feet tall at the highest point, maybe taller. I would say yeah. And you could it was it round bales or square bales? Square, square bales. Yeah. Okay, or the rectangle bales. Yeah. yeah. So we you could like climb them like stairs and get all the way on the top and shit. And uh, it was a huge hay barn, <clears throat> man. Yeah, we used to play in it like. Once a week or twice a week or something. There, there for a week we played in it like every day. I, th- I feel uh-huh. like, yeah, we were building like really big <laughs> forts like at the very top. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, yeah. Just <laughs> yeah, one day, dude. like the week before it burned down, is the day that we got caught and got in trouble. I yeah. remember. Um, I remember that day that we we were playing in there. Uh, Kyle Burleson is like going across one of the rafters, right, and then just stops and then hangs. And then drops, <laughs> and he falls on the one hay bale that's down below. <laughs> yeah, you remember that. Yeah, dude. If I remember correctly, I thought we were all standing there on top, and he loses his balance and falls backwards. No, I'm pretty sure he was I just intentionally him dangling. Yeah, I remember he was intentionally <laughs> wanting to go across it. Oh, we really? Used, okay. We used to play like in that like uh, bus stop awning. We used to play on those rafters all the time. Yeah, going across them and oh, stuff. Yeah. So I think he was just thinking like, you know, I'm just going to cross this thing like normal. Okay. And then yeah, I think he got tired and he fell, but luckily he fell into the one that was <laughs> still there. Didn't die, crazy. thank God. Yeah, it was like a big concrete floor and one hay bale on the ground, and he happened to fall in that one hay bale. <laughs> mm-hmm. So wild. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that same day was the day that I got caught in that avalanche. Which yeah, that's like still one of the funniest things that's ever happened to me, man. And, I've, I've, and the crazy thing is, I videotaped the whole thing, and then I lost, I lost the tape and all that stuff, man. Were yeah. you there for that avalanche, David? Maybe I don't know. I don't really remember a whole lot of what we did in there. I'm pretty sure that's why we got in trouble. If I'm not mistaken. <laughs> yeah, they were like, "Hey, all this hail, all this bay, bells of hell are just on the ground now." <laughs> pretty much, uh, I was like racing. I want to say Kyle Brolson to the top of it. And it was set up to where it was pretty steep. So um, we're racing. I get, like, to the top of it. I was, like, maybe, I don't know, one or two steps away. And the whole thing just starts to give out from under me. <laughs> and, like, you know, like those movies where the main characters run in and then they make this amazing jump and they somehow land it or whatever? <laughs> it was like that. But I was just watching everything fall. And I'm just like, oh, shit, you know? <laughs> it, it was wild. When I, <laughs> I landed. And then when I <laughs> I was stuck, like, 
I want to say I was stuck like this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Whenever I, whenever I, I saw that. it, all I could see was like hands and feet. Yeah, I couldn't see anybody's bodies. I could see your guys' hands. <laughs> like, like my hands and feet are here. Uh, it was like that scene in Mulan whenever that avalanche happens and they're picking people's heads out of the, of the yeah. snow and stuff. Right, yeah. Super fun. Yeah, Super I remember, itchy too. I remember when we got in trouble for that and like my mom was talking to me about it and she's like, when I was a kid, I played in this hay barn and it was the same deal. It was like huge piles and stacks of, of hay bales, like 30 to 40 feet high. And she fell down the crack in between two stacks oh, all wow. the way to the floor. <laughs> and she said she couldn't get out because they were so... She was like like a... <laughs> like her arms were just up, you know, like to her sides. And she couldn't move or maneuver or anything. And she said that like while her mom got the person that owned the place and they started moving hay bales the whole time she was there she could like hear like critters and like things moving around and like the blackness and she, i was like dude oh <laughs> that's, so Ooh, that's, we- that's scary man yeah but no i was gonna say i found out um oh god what was i reading about oh i, I was reading about these like food distribution centers that were like getting destroyed or something like that and so people were freaking uh-huh. out about it and I, so I like dug into it because I'm like, you know, are, are we about to run into some kind of crazy food shortage? I found out that this place in Oregon went up because they, they like process corn in some way. Um, I can't remember what they call it, like pressed corn or something. And if you don't stool it, store it in a cool environment and it's at a certain humidity, like 30% humidity or more inside the, the stuff that they make out of it. It releases like a chemical that if it reaches like 120 degrees, it will catch on fire. Really? Oh, Which wow. is not, a, you know, it's not a high, it's not high temperature. So they shut it in like a, in like a cooler in their shed. It was a hot day and it just exploded and burned down the whole facility. And I found out that it's true for hay too. So people have to harvest after the hay has dried a lot. That's why they leave it in their fields for so long. Cause if you store it in a shed then it will release that chemical, and if the temperature in the shed gets above 120, it will explode. So I think that's probably what happened to his barn. He was probably just stupid and didn't know that. He oh, blamed it wow, on a bunch yeah. of kids. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <clears throat> yeah. It's wild. Were we smoking cigarettes and stuff at that time, though? Uh, I don't think I was. No. I don't think so. I wonder how old we were. But yeah, we the, uh, skateboard, I believe. the Bradford show up at our, like, m- me and Kyle's trailer first, or maybe it was after David, I don't know, but they showed up at our trailer, and we had been with our parents the entire day, so my parents answered the door like, you know, you guys are crazy, our kids have been with us all day, there's no way that they started the fire, mm-hmm. so they leave, and this fire is like... God, what would you say? Fifty feet high, at least. <laughs> Dude, like one of the tallest fires I've ever seen yeah. is like insane. It engulfed that whole I'm, thing. I'm yeah. pretty sure we were gone all day when that happened, and we came back and it was already <laughs> just ashes. Mm-hmm. But um, so I leave the trailer, and my cousin Kyle's house was like I don't know, hundred feet away. Um, so I, I go, I go outside and start running cause I'm going to tell my cousin, I'm like, Hey, look at this fucking fire. This is fucking crazy. <laughs> you know? So I'm running and Miss Bradford rolls down her window. They're, they're going like 10 miles an hour. She's like, you can't warn your friends. <laughs> 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 not going to warn anybody. I'm going to show this dude the fire. What are you talking about? Yeah. This guy <laughs> loves fire. You don't get it. <laughs> She's like torn between sp- speeding up to catch you and maintaining the 10 mile an hour speed limit like <laughs> we will find you <laughs> god dude Ugh. um no I, I do remember that time that um we we used to take our bikes out like like west and then north on that dirt road and there was like those huge hills out there that we would bomb yeah. on our bikes uh-huh. and i remember like you guys used to go with some other people, I think Nathan, uh, God, what's his Ellis? last name? Yeah, Nathan Ellis, maybe, uh, and then, like a couple other people. They but lived you, out there. Yeah, you guys all had mountain bikes though, and I remember I used to want to go, and you guys would tell me like you're not going to want to go on like a BMX because you got to like be able to put it in first gear and make it up the hills and stuff. And then I finally got a mountain bike, and and we used to go, and I think, I think it was you, Connor, that ate shit while we were out there. 
Probably. I ate shit hard one and, time. Yeah. And messed your knee and elbow and shoulder up and stuff. And we had to all walk back with you. But uh, no, I remember before. Bef- yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, before I started going out with you guys. Um, you go mountain biking sandals. <laughs> yeah. I heard that. Dude, that hill was wicked though, man. Yeah. Oh my God. It was like. It was like a quarter mile of like a, a small gradient, and then it just pitched Dropped you, off. dude. Yeah. Like like it was hardcore, man. But uh, I, I remember one day, like I still hadn't gone out there, but a bunch of the big kids took this one kid out there, and then he had a BMX bike, and they kept telling him like, "You don't want to take your BMX bike out here, dude. You want a mountain bike?" And he's like, "No, I can I can do it." So they're like, "All right, if you can't keep up, we're gonna leave you behind," and they left him behind. And he was like seven or eight. Like he's a young kid, dude. And yeah. he came back. Like, I remember we were all sitting out on the grass and this kid, like we all look over and this kid's just like running as fast as he can, screaming, crying. His shirt was covered in puke. Like he was just like utterly like panicked and distressed because he got left out there by himself and just like thought he was going to die or something, I guess. I don't know, man. (laughs) So that that was actually, I think the first time I met Nathan Ellis for real, because he was like, I'm going to beat up whoever left him out there or something. I don't know. Yeah. Then I started dating Kimber Potter. (laughs) Good times. But, uh, yeah, I do. I remember that, like, just being like, holy crap, man. This They left that kid out there, dude. <laughs> dude I remember one time at that, that same hill, man. You recall there was that kid that got that freaking bumper off the side of the road? And then was running around with that bumper like he was a car? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then, like, hit that kid that was coming down the hill, and that kid <laughs> ate it. Do you remember that? I remember that. Oh, my crazy. God. <sighs> Sounds like something that would happen, though. I remember at the bottom of the hill, there was that little, like, there's like, that chicken chicken farm, chicken, mm-hmm. all those chicken, um, like, houses. Yeah. Okay. And you know what's so gross is that we would play in that water. Right yeah. There, that yeah. bridge where all those crawdad were. And we would get in there and just play in that shit all day. That was probably, there was probably so much salmonella in oh, that gosh, water. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'd love to go back and, like, see, like, how often I had diarrhea after I played out there in that water, you know? <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. How much I had horrendous vomiting and food, you know? <laughs> yeah, we found out later that that's... Well, we are, I mean, you guys, I'm, I'm sure, already knew that was Kodiak, but I didn't know that Kodiak went all the way from, like, north side of Neosho, like, dude, like, past the south side. You might have had to make a couple small turns, but it still it stayed Kodiak. Mm-hmm. So when I found that out, like, I would take that route to get to work sometimes, and I had to drive up and down that hill, dude. And it is just as scary in a car yeah. as it is on a yeah, bike, yeah. man. Like, <clears throat> I, I took it home a lot whenever I was, like... You know, yeah, <laughs> doing some stuff back when I was younger. I was with Marcus, and it was iced over, and we couldn't get up that hill. We got oh my stuck. God. Yeah, we got stuck <laughs> at the bottom of that hill. Yeah, jeez, wow, huh. yeah, that hill's crazy, man. Yeah, riding out there, we found those uh, those pages of that porno mag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. And we also found that uh, what was it like peppermint schnapps or something? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So one of the two. We yeah. got some schnapps. <laughs> Dude, we found that porno mag under that bridge. Is that the same bridge you're talking about? I was talking like all those pages, but yeah, also that one that that fucking <laughs> dick. <laughs> like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> a black and white picture of a dick. <laughs> like, okay, man, you want me to see this? I'll look at it. <laughs> I don't think I was with you guys for that one. Oh, man. <laughs> I did find a porno under a bridge once, though, when we lived in Sircoxy. I think I was, like, six or seven. And there was a bridge down the road from our house, and there was a, a, a rock. Like, you know how there's, like, concrete that's, like, it looks like concrete mortar with rocks in it? Uh-huh. Like, yeah. It was, like, really, really cheaply made, like, whatever. That's what the walls of the bridge were made out of. And we noticed that there was one rock where all the mortar had been like chiseled out of the like around the outside of the rock. And when we took the rock out, there was a like a porno magazine behind it. And we're like, why would somebody go through all the effort to hide a porno right here? Yep. And that was the first time I ever saw like 
boobs. And I was like, oh my God. You're so hot, dude. <laughs> dude, Jacob, look at these boobs. Uh, like, remember there were several times where we found ripped up pages of porno mags on the side of the road. It yeah. was you, I remember one time we were riding and to David's house when he lived on AA Highway. And I remember looking out into the woods, I think, and seeing a whole bunch of scattered porno mag pages. Like every, every 10 feet, it's like, oh, we got another page. You said, guys, you were supposed to be here an hour ago. Like, sorry, we got caught up, man. There's so many pages. <laughs> Gold mine, Connor. Yeah. Gold. Yeah. Oh, oh, trailer man. parks, man. Trailer parks. Do you remember uh, all those times holding the electric fence? Oh yeah, yeah. There was an electric yeah. fence around the. Uh, torna- there was a tornado shelter at that trailer park because there was tornadoes there, like I said, all the time. Yeah. But um, there was an electric fence around there, and they'd have cows on top of that. <laughs> uh, yeah, they would. Tornado, f- yeah. <clears throat> and we would have like what. Six, seven, eight kids out there sometimes. Yeah, and we would all hold hands and then grab that electric fence. And you, I don't know if this is proven or if this is just something we all told ourselves. But the person on the end seemed like they would always get hit the hardest. Yeah, that's what it seemed like. Yeah, God, dude, I never once touched that thing, man. And it seemed like we always set up the youngest kid, like the smallest one, <laughs> to be on the end of the chain. <laughs> Not always, you know. You know okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you guys, I remember you guys took me out there one time, and it was like, we were out there for like an hour while you guys were trying to convince me to grab it, and I was like, I'm not touching it, dude. (laughs) (laughs) Just a little shock, man. Yeah. I do remember somebody, didn't somebody like clothesline themselves on that fence or run into it with their bike or something and fly over? I don't I remember someone like eating shit on that fence at one point. Like on a BMX bike, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think I remember that. Yeah. Okay. I can't remember who it was though. They like f- flew over the top of it or something. And then someone got clotheslined on that clothesline when we were playing oh, yeah. like, squirt guns or yeah. something squirt. like that. Yeah. Dude, so many kids got like messed up in that park, man. Uh-huh. Yeah, there was clotheslines everywhere, and then there was barbed wire fence, or there was like electric fences and barbed wire <laughs> fences. Yeah. Yeah, and then there was uh, those ra- those like cord railing that went along the road at the whole uh-huh. trailer park right. like this is one of those trailer parks that had like how many rows you think four so five rows one, worth of trailers two, three there must have been four. yeah like five rows and then like a kind of like a back row type thing yeah and then yeah. some extras on different roads yeah. how many trailers do you think they had in that trailer park 50 60 about 50 or 60 yeah yeah man yeah it was wild because they added on to it before Mm-hmm. We moved out. <clears throat> but yeah, this one time, man, um, our neighbors had this husky, man. It was a very nice dog. And <laughs> one day we were playing with her, and she, like, chases me down <laughs> up against the barbed wire fence and, like, scratches my back really bad. Oh, shit. And uh, I had, like, this bigger mole on my back. She scratched the mole off. <laughs> it's crazy. God. Yeah, I remember... That dog was always really nice. Her name was Mina. Yeah. Yeah, and she jumped on your back, and it looked like someone had uh, really stuck a good nail right into that mole and just kind of took a chunk out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you were that kid, uh, JR. He freaking was riding his BMX bike, and we had those... We had those... Uh, <laughs> Uh, what were speed they called? Bumps? Speed bumps. Yeah, and he he was like, "All right, guys, I'm gonna do this 360," and he does like a 180. He does a 90. A 90, okay. <laughs> and lands and pops both of his tires. Oh yeah, at the same How time. How do you do that? It's impossible. Yeah, <laughs> that was wild. The same kid sat on my bed one time, got up, and the whole bed was warped down. Yep. He broke one of the springs or something. Like it was never the same. I tried pulling up, so nothing would ever get that thing back up. He also like anywhere he sat, it smelled like straight up feces for like MP. days afterward. Man, yeah. it was so god. Yeah, he p- probably didn't wipe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I remember this one time for some reason he he was fight. We were fighting him. We were fighting him. Yeah, but he had done something to me and Connor. We were fighting him in the trailer park, and. He was like, the sun is going away, so I have no powers. Dude, <laughs> he, kicked me, 
He kicked me so fucking hard in the shins, dude. I thought my legs were broken. Dude. <laughs> like, not joking, dude. I was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> so the little kid's like, dude, I didn't know that I could get hit that hard in my shins, dude. Like, I never thought that was possible. And then you started skateboarding. <laughs> he God. had to have been like two or three years older than us, right? Yeah. And like 150 pounds heavier. Yeah. Yeah, that, that reminds me of At least 200 it. pounds, man. <laughs> That reminds me of that kid I fought that just like kept Sparta kicking me in the chest, man. Yeah. Like then Kyle was like he did it like four times. He would like Sparta kick me in the chest and I'd fall down and then I'd get up and he'd do it again and I'd get up and then like after like four times, Kyle was like, Grab his foot, dude. <laughs> and then I was like, Oh yeah. And then he wouldn't kick me. So I was like waiting for him to kick me, so I'd grab his foot and he wouldn't kick me. But I knew that if I went up to punch him, he'd kick me. So I was like, dude, no, I'm done. I'm not gonna fight you, bro. Yeah. This is stupid. <clears throat> yeah, it's it fun times, man. Sometimes. <laughs> Sometimes it's fun times. Yeah. <laughs> I don't condone violence, but sometimes in a trailer park, you got to fight. You know, that's just how it is. Hey, talk shit on my dad. Okay. Yeah. Actually, that other kid talked shit on your dad. Yeah, this kid that. smacked me in the face with like spitty Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> There was there was a time where people would make this like sugar Kool Aid thing in a in a Ziploc bag and they would pour it in the palm of their hand and lick it. Yeah. So by the time they got home, their hand was covered in like spit and red dye from this Kool Aid, and it was like three days in a row. This kid would smack me in the face when he got off the bus <laughs> with his Bastard. spitty Kool Aid hand. <laughs> so finally one day I was like, "Dude, I'm gonna fight this kid," and then you guys were like, "All right, let's do it," and then we got off the bus and. We met him, by, I think, behind your guys'... It was, like, behind your guys' trailer and, like, three trailers down. Because we were, like, we want to be close to the close to home, but not too too close, you know? Right. And then, like, me and this kid were talking smack, and then the kid he was with started talking smack on you, Connor, and then, like, said something about your dad, and you were, like... Your dad's a bitch. Yeah, you yeah. were, like, oh, it's over now. Yeah. And then we both just ran in, and I just got kicked in the stomach, like, eight times. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was my first, like, actual fist fight, so I'm not going to hold it against myself. Yeah, learning experience, you know? Yeah. yeah. Man, Connor, do you remember that night we came home from church, and they had dropped off a shit ton of sand next to, the tu next to that little tunnel thing? Yeah. And there was, like, f 10, 15 kids out there, and they'd made freaking tunnels and sandcastles, and they had all those tunnels made for gerbils. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay yeah that was cool <laughs> yeah that was pretty cool <laughs> yeah they had like mazes right that's what yeah. you're talking about yeah yeah I was like wow that's this is cool this is cool we live in a cool place yeah <laughs> that tunnel was always fun to jump on and yeah Viking King of the Hill you know yeah I kissed some I kissed some girls in those tunnels right there. Oh uh, yeah, what were the names? Uh, <laughs> I, there, uh, oh, I, I, I'll never remember this chick's I'll never remember this chick's name, dude. Do you, uh, do you remember when I was wearing those bucket hats a lot? Those blue that had yeah those, yeah the Nelly hat or whatever yeah the Nelly hat yeah I had this girlfriend during that time and. She was freaking hot. Do you remember? But we were, I was only like 12, so she could have been really not hot. I don't know. Man. Kyle having a hot girl. She was real, dude. Yeah. I swear, man. <laughs> That's a ring of <laughs> But I kissed her in that tunnel, dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Was it the uh, the Hispanic girl? I'm pretty sure she was Hispanic. Yeah, I remember her. I remember she her. was pretty cute. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that tunnel being like a rite of passage. Because it was so tall that you couldn't run up it without using your hands until you were like a certain height or certain like you know remember that yeah of course it was yeah. like a Getting challenge up it without using your hands yeah, yeah. just running up and it, like yeah. I remember the first time I did that I was like oh my god I'm a man like <laughs> <laughs> I can do it because I think I was trying for like a year year and a half to get up that thing without my hands I just could not do it. Uh. I remember the girl with the breasts. 
That's, that's, oh, that's one of my fondest memories. Yeah. <laughs> that that you forget her. yeah. <laughs> I don't know what her name is, but God bless her. Wherever she is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I want to say her name was maybe Samantha or Amanda. <laughs> one of the two. Yeah. Or Samanda. Some <laughs> and uh. But she 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 flashed us once on the bus and then she did it again whenever we were in our bedroom remember that we had our window open and we yeah. were like <laughs> I don't know what we said to her but it was see your boobies <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She was yeah. a couple years older than us as well. Yeah. Yeah, and then we were... She knew the, what she did for us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we were, like, at the park, like, by those big boulders. And we were just... I think... Because I... I want to say I hadn't seen them yet. And, you guys, and you, you guys were like, you should show him. He hasn't seen yet. And she's like, okay. And just, like, just showed me. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> she actually does it. <laughs> <laughs> she was a legend, man. Yeah, Ugh. yeah. And then we, then we were hooked, man. And it was like every time we went to the creek, like every girl that rode by in a canoe, we were like, "Hey, <laughs> you would be, uh, be shocked to find out how many pairs of breasts we saw at the creek." Yeah, like, God. I'm glad that we live in a place where that's acceptable. You know. Yeah. God bless America. Yeah, yeah we were, we were also like. <laughs> Middle schoolers at the time, so yep, <laughs> you'll forgive our perversions. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. When you're in like fifth and sixth grade, seventh grade, anything goes, man. Yeah, yeah. you're trying to get anything you can get. <laughs> I mean, it's just a question. Like, can I see your boobies? Like, you know, dude, I still remember this one time. We were at the creek, and this chick was. Uh, these people were going by on a raft. There was like six of them on the raft. And me and Connor were like in the deep end. It was just enough where our heads were above water and we could like tippy toe on the water. And we had like beads. And so <laughs> if, if we were like, you know, show me your boobies. And if they did it, we'd throw a set of beads at them. Yeah. And I remember this girl, we were like, they were floating by and it was like three chicks, three dudes. And we were like, show us boobies or whatever. And there was one girl that was kind of laying like face down at an angle. And one of the guys was like, she's fucking pregnant, pervert. And then she like looks at him and then she just like lifts her her swimsuit up and shows we're like, we're like oh my god and then I remember like <laughs> she's pregnant <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I remember like swinging these beads above my head and launching them and they go in the complete opposite direction <laughs> and just hit the water and sink <laughs> oh man yeah, I remember, like, we would never show up there with beads, but we'd always somehow get beads. <laughs> yeah, dude. Well, inevitably, <laughs> someone would be doing exactly what David did and overthrow them, and we'd find them underwater. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. We, so we always found, like, out. three or four or five sets underwater as soon as we got there. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's like free boobies. Yeah. Yep. People are bad shots and they're drunk. What are the odds? Mm, true that. Marty Grawl on the river. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was... God. We'll have to tell Creek stories one day. Instead of trailer park stories, yeah, mm -hmm. no doubt. Got a, I got a large handful of those. <laughs> yeah, me too. <sighs> yeah, um, I guess this one counts. Um, no, never mind. Yeah, tell it, Connor. <clears throat> no, it's not really a trailer park story. So, part of it, part of it takes place in a trailer park, but most of it's not. So. <laughs> Trying to think of some other ones, you know. I remember all those times that uh, I mean, we pissed the Bradfords off to enough to where they would raise our rent. Like we would, it seems like they were always raising our rent because we would do something stupid and get our mom and dad in trouble. Dude. Yeah. Um, do you remember uh, they the Bradfords ended up hiring like private security? Yeah. To come out there and just pretty much watch <laughs> our cousin Kyle's house. Yeah, he always parked right there. Yeah, because Kyle's house, his, his mom would go to work at 9 o'clock at night, and everybody would know that's the house to go to to go party, and we would do it like, all the time. I mean, that's the place I would go to just hang out at night when my parents went to sleep. Yeah, but, his, his house was already all like wrecked and shit, so it was like, <laughs> if we wrecked it, it was like, you know. Yeah, <laughs> unfortunately. Yeah. But we ended up cleaning the house up pretty good and making it look pretty nice. You know, 
Yeah, that one day we just cleaned like all night. Yeah. Yeah, and surprised his mom when she got home. Yeah. Dang, that would have been cool. Yeah, I don't think I was there for that though. I remember them giving me a lot of shit for it for not being there. I was like, okay, okay. <laughs> I remember, yeah, I helped them clean out a lot of that shit, dude. Yeah. yeah. But I remember they got that security out there, and I remember one night I was, I was so drunk or something, walk out there and I was screaming at that private security, trying to get him to go away. <laughs> That's exact opposite of what you want him to do. <laughs> he had like a little cop car too. Yeah. Yeah. But. Little bitch car. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What did it say? Newton County Security Patrol or something on it? Something, something. stupid. Something real uh, stupid. Yeah. yeah. Gosh. <laughs> Glad to be out of there. <clears throat> yeah. Yep. Hmm. It's a lot of, a lot of good memories and some bad ones there at that trailer park. I remember one time um, being held at gunpoint from the Islander kid. Yeah. Yeah. And I just like looked at him in the face. I'm like, dude, if you're going to shoot me, shoot me. Like, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and shoot me. We're right in the middle of this trailer park. So many people are going to see you shoot me. Just go ahead and do it if you're going to do it. And he never shot me. God Obviously, dang. I'm talking right now, but yeah, that was crazy. I probably yeah. would have been way too scared to say some shit like that. <laughs> the same kid would like take a bunch of uh, soda cans and um, haul like cut the ends off and then like tape them all together or like bottles or whatever, tape them all together and then um, like spray the inside with like I don't know what was it like hairspray or something lighter, like lighter that. fluid or something. Spray the inside with it and then light it. It make a big thunk noise <laughs> and you go Macronesian style boy. <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know why he would do that, but he thought it was cool. Yeah, he sure did. That's <laughs> <laughs> just uh, you know, if you've got if you've got guns in your house, make sure you lock them up so your crazy children don't point them at their friends or True that. or otherwise. Because that's I mean that's big time, dude. Mm -hmm. Don't pull some shit like that. Yeah, you don't want to pull. You don't want to do that. No. Kids that age, man, just do not understand the consequences of stuff like that. Yeah, dude. Mm -hmm. uh, why, why would he even need a gun? You know, mm -hmm. could so easily have accidentally had the safety not on and barely put his finger on the trigger. Mm -hmm. Could have uh, wrote the ending to the Kyle Hobbs story. Yeah, should have <laughs> been that cocky, but whatever. That's who I was when I was like, yeah, that young. Um. David, did you ever look up the thing I had you look up earlier today? Yeah. It's pretty crazy. <laughs> so what'd you find? Well, how much do you know about it? Just that there's some conspiracy Well, stuff. my friend at work, Kelly Cook, she was listening to the podcast and she came over to me and she's like, hey, you should look up RH negative blood. Some people think that people that have that blood could be possibly aliens, stuff like that. So I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's when I that's when I hit you up instantly. I'm like, hey, check this out. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out a way to to phrase this that makes the most cohesive sense. But so like, I guess in your blood on your blood cells on the surface of your blood cells, you have a uh, it's called a D antigen that helps with like protein synthesis and stuff. So if you're someone that has like O positive. A, B positive, A positive, whatever, blood. That means they have that antigen on their blood cells. If they're negative, they don't. And only like 15% of the world is negative. So, and it's like, a, it's apparently, it's really rare. And they're, they're finding that like these people have differences in like the t their bodies and stuff like for instance they have like lower average heart rate lower average blood pressure some of them have like an extra vertebra that's what i saw an extra vertebra i'm like holy yeah crap. and so they and like i guess scientists have been doing all kinds of research trying to figure out like where this thing came from like why did did we did we develop it somehow like they're thinking that and because they've done like a lot of tests on different uh illnesses and stuff and do you guys know what toxoplasmosis is no it's um, 
there's a bacteria called Toxoplasma gondii that you can find in like cat shit. It's like it's like why they tell you to keep kids and pregnant women away from cat shit. And okay. Basically, what it does. <laughs> but is, I can play with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Connor, go and play with that cat shit. Wait, basically, what it does is like somehow it gets into like the systems like the of like house rats and mice and stuff like that Ew. and it convinces them to go against their their instincts to stay away from cats it basically makes okay, them commit I've suicide this, by being yeah. eaten by cats and pretty then, sure and joe rogan it, talks about it and stuff right yeah and yeah. then it's like recycled through their their poop or whatever and people with rh negative blood have a higher resistance to toxoplasmosis Really? So and but they're like we don't know like why that's like one benefit of it but we don't know why it's there or whatever. They say it's only been around since like the year 500 AD as early as they can find it. So, a little, little weird, but <coughs> the the time frame specifically is like I, I guess when we were expanding across Europe, they didn't see it in Africa or the Mesopotamian region, which is where they think where well obviously where like life originated or the human life, they only ever started seeing it in Europe. So, like, it's it's actually led to a lot of people to believe that, like, white people are, are natively RH negative, and that's what makes them better than what other races and stuff. So there's a, there's a racist component to it, too. But they also think that, like, they found trace evidence of RH negative blood on the, um, oh God, what is it called? Uh, the Shroud of Turin, you guys know what that is? Mm -mm. They think it's the cloth that Jesus was buried in. Oh. So if you put it under negative light, it shows like basically the face of Jesus, but it has blood on it. And so when they tested the blood, it was RH negative. So that's a little weird. Okay. So the, and then of course the same racist people use it as like, well, see, Jesus was, Jesus was the originator of like RH negative blood and he was a white dude. And that's why like all these, anyway, it's, it's stupid, but, uh, they're, the highest concentration of RH negative people is in this place called, um, Oh God, where is it? Uh, I can't find it. Anyway, it's like France is here. Spain is here right on the border. There's like a chunk of land like that's kind of splits. I think it's called Basque. It's like B A S Q. -E. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's called Basque. I, yeah. I watched a little video on it earlier and that's got like the highest concentration of, of RH negative people in the world. It's like 35% of them are RH negative. And I saw that they also speak a different language that shouldn't be native to that part of the world. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not rooted in like Germanic or Spanish or anything like that. It's, it's super weird, but, uh, they, a lot of people think that they were the ones like in like ancient times that they were basically like Atlantis. Like they built the pyramids, they built the hanging gardens of Babylon, they built they built the Tower of Babel, and they actually traveled over here before anyone else did and built the Mayan ruins or the Mayan temples and the Aztec temples and all this stuff, and then they slowly like died out or like just migrated back to their homeland, which I mean you know, <laughs> mm. but yeah, there's people that think that Rh negative people are like the descendant of aliens that visited Earth and bred with humans. There's people that think that RH negative people are descendant of the Nephilim that mated with angels in the Bible. Yeah. Like dude, all sorts of shit. And there's people that think they're like reptilian aliens because of the vertebra and the lower body temperature and shit. Do they need like a heat lamp to survive? <laughs> no, no. Okay. You uh, <laughs> see if there's, um, I did watch a YouTube video that went over a lot of this stuff is on, on the History Channel's YouTube video. Was it Ancient Aliens? Or, yeah. Yeah. Did you watch the same thing? Yeah. Did you read the comment section? No. Oh my God, bro. <laughs> you should you know, read, read some of the comments. Okay. I. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go to it. Um, basically, the gist is like all these people are like, "Yeah, I'm Rh negative, and I can like talk with animals." <laughs> 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 <It's> just, <dude. laughs> It's nuts, man. Uh, I've never okay. even heard of this RH negative before. Like, <laughs> but I'm not a blood expert either, you know? Yeah, dude, listen. Uh, let's see. 
I'm RH negative and I have the worst allergies. It all makes sense now. I'm allergic to planet Earth. I'm not supposed to be here. <laughs> Time for me to leave. <laughs> Uh, yeah, this one. I, I'm RH negative from South Africa. My grandfather was from Holland. I always have low blood pressure, averaging 95 over 60. Can't handle heat. Love being alone. People who passed over will bring me messages in my dreams. Can, can communicate with animals, even in silence. <laughs> Uh, have great empathy for others, especially the elderly, and can see situations unfold before they do. I wouldn't call this a gift as it causes great anxiety and depression as I find and I absorb problems of others and it's very hard to shake. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, if you read the comments under this, like, there's, there's people that are like, feel and experience exactly like you. Same for me. I can relate to everything you say. My mother was the same. <laughs> Like, there's so many people in these comment sections that are like, me too. There's, like, <laughs> it's so weird, man. I, I commented on that too, and I was like, y'all are fucking crazy. <laughs> <laughs> y'all thinking you're wizards or some shit? <laughs> yeah, that's probably one of the wildest conspiracies I've, I've heard. Did you see anything about the presidents at all? No, I, I mean, I spent probably an hour or more just getting the stuff that I got, and I didn't even think about the president thing. But Yeah, she, she, Kelly also brought up that, I guess, there's been a high proportion of presidents that are also <laughs> RH negative, and also, like, a lot of people that are high up in power, like some of the elites of the world. The Illuminati. Yes, yeah. the 1%. <laughs> so it always comes back to the Illuminati, man. Have you guys noticed that? <laughs> it's like anytime there's something weird going on, they're like, yeah, also the elites. Like, <laughs> like when there's like a satanic panic, they're like, yeah, the elites are Satanists too. And then they're like, hey, there's this whole thing with like Wayfair and like people buying children. And they're like, yeah, the elites are doing that too. <laughs> I don't know, dude. Like, not talking about the Halo elites, right? <laughs> No, okay. I'm talking about like, <laughs> politicians. <Hey man. laughs> yeah. The elites are coming, man. <laughs> They're RH negative, too. <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. That's pretty crazy. I'll have to look into that, too. But Yeah, um, it was pretty wild. So, um, Connor, you had a couple things you wanted to talk about, right? David, did you have any, actually, any other topics? No. No? Okay. Okay. Um, so one thing that kind of popped into my head was, uh, I guess we'll take the easy one first. What if you had an extra $10,000 and wanted to go anywhere, like a free ticket anywhere? What would that be and what would you do and kind of what's your thought process behind it? You want to start it off, David? I guess. I mean, I don't really have anywhere specific. I'm just kind of torn between like a really high dollar like fancy ass like skiing trip somewhere or like snowboarding or like you know just a typical all expenses paid vacation like two weeks on like an island resort or something like one of those ones where like the floors are see-through and you can see the water and the fish underneath your feet and stuff you know what i'm talking cool. about like yeah just one of those really really fancy like i don't know dude i don't know why i thought like skiing or snowboarding or, or, yeah. Fun activity, yeah. Yeah. Just like go to a super nice, like, ski resort and just, mm -hmm. yeah, chill out, man. Or maybe a couple nights, like, go down, go down the mountain into, like, the city and just go to some crazy club or something. That'd be cool. <laughs> that would be cool. But that's probably where you'd end up dying because a lot of people die when they're skiing. Yeah. I don't know tree. if a lot of people do, but some. I heard you almost always will break a bone the first time you snowboard. Really? <laughs> yeah. Because it's like you don't anticipate how difficult it's going to be or how hard you hit when you fall. Because you're like, oh, it's just snow. But. <clears throat> I don't underestimate, uh, underestimate the mountain, you know? Yeah. yeah. That. <laughs> That's how you die. <laughs> <laughs> I've got no business being on a, a, any type of thing like that. With how many surgeries I've had on my knees, I don't want to. True risk any of that kind of stuff anymore yeah pretty much just disc golf is where i draw the line 
I don't know, man. I think, and like, plus, like, if you were on an island somewhere, I think it'd be so cool to go, like, snorkeling at a reef or, like, scuba diving or, you know, like, finding some place that's, like, maybe, like, 20 feet deep that has, like, a lot of different, you know, ocean life in it. And you're just scuba diving right there. Like, That'd be cool. Just 20 feet deep water, crystal clear blue water. Yeah. And then, like, do, like, parasailing and shit. Uh, maybe yeah, there's, like, some type of jungle environment on the island that you go hiking on. Like, yeah. <laughs> That's sweet. It sounds generic, but whatever. <clears throat> sounds peaceful, David. It sounds nice. <laughs> um, I would like to go... It, it would be a scenario. I'd like it to be... I'd like to go to Tokyo, but it would have to be the Tokyo Drift experience. <laughs> um, I need to be drifting cars in the mountains with... Uh, what's her name? Uh, yeah, the girl. Kira or some bullcrap. <laughs> Sung Gyuk. <laughs> yeah, I need to be trying to be the DK. Um, I need that really cool music playing around me at all times. Mm -hmm. um, Hell yeah. I'd like to go to some really cool arcades. Even though I heard a, I heard some of the arcades out there are actually closing, like a lot of the big ones, mm -hmm. like Sega's getting out of the arcade business out there, which kind of sucks. But uh, I think that would be really, really fun to go to Tokyo. I would just like to be immersed into something different. I think it'd be really cool. Yeah, I've always wanted to go to Tokyo because like, they have like the... Uh the suicide forest and shit out there. And then there's like the Mount Fuji and stuff is there. You like hike Mount Fuji. That'd be cool. But there's also like, you know, the greatest sushi places in the world. The, the greatest, like, you know, food, food trucks and food carts and stuff. Like really good ramen too. Great nightlife. Yeah. Go to the, like the Nintendo headquarters store or something while you're there. Just like yeah. check stuff out. Yeah. That'd be sick. Tokyo's a good choice. Go to some of those old uh, video game stores, uh -huh. find some old retro stuff. That would be really cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Isaac Isaac bought me a copy of uh, Okami in in Japanese on the Switch when he was there at an airport for like oh, yeah. twenty bucks. Well, brought that's it cool. back to me. I was like, I don't know if this will ever be worth a lot of money, but this is dope. <laughs> <laughs> nice. When did Isaac go out there? Uh, when he was visiting. His like because he's married to uh, his wife's Filipino, and so they visited home, and like they had to go through Japan. So while he was in the airport, he was just like visiting little shops, and he found a little game store. Just like, oh, cool, Okami in Japanese for like twenty bucks. So yeah, yeah. She, she's cooler than Karen. Uh, Is her name Karen? I mean, I love Karen, but yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, so you're still friendly to Karen? Yeah, yeah, okay. we all are. She's, you know, she's. I, I don't. I wouldn't say she's like necessarily part of the family anymore, like she used to be. But she's still, yeah. Like, did they have? They had kids, right? Oh, uh, just one. Just one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's. I think he's in middle school now. It's fucking crazy, man. Wow. Or high school, maybe at this point, he might be fourteen. Hmm. Ugh. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> yeah, um, for me, I'd like to go to like, you know, Hawaii or something like that, you know, just stay somewhere really nice and just chill out for like a week. I think that'd be great. Probably wouldn't do anything crazy. Maybe try surfing or something. Mm -hmm. Did you, you know, know what would be sick is skydiving in Hawaii in Hawaii. Like you but just the see like the stuff? island right under you and you've got to like <laughs> aim for the island. Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Like, if you land in the water, you're like, oops, I landed in the water. Somebody come get me, you know? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Maybe you'd drown. I don't know. <laughs> be cool to do the whole, uh, like, the parasailing or whatever. Mm -hmm. Be fun. But yeah, just uh, <laughs> hang with the hotties, you know? That's, <laughs> yeah. that's part of it. It's like there's going to be some hot chicks there. Yeah. You know, so. Got to be some hot chicks there, yeah. yeah. Go watch, uh, like, a luau show with like, chicks, like, doing, you know. A little dancing in mm -hmm. their little skirts and the fire poi and all that the coconut bras. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. it'd, be, it'd be fun too to just like grab a bag of random shit and like take it up to the volcano and just like throw it in the lava. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, what does a watermelon look like when it hits lava? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder like how easy or difficult it would be to spend an entire ten grand on a trip like that. You know. 
I feel like in Tokyo, you'd be like, you'd have to bring an extra like empty duffel bag with you for shit to bring home, you know? But like in, in like where, what I was saying, it's, it's usually like a one and done cost. It's like $7,000 for an all expenses paid deal. You just get there and right. whatever. I feel like Hawaii would be pretty easy to spend 10 grand. Oh yeah. yeah. But so I'm going to want to get some souvenirs, you know, mm-hmm. but get they got a, some cool stuff. Get a tiki mask. Yeah. <laughs> That'd be sweet, dude. Yeah. A couple shark necklaces, shark tooth necklaces. Yeah. <laughs> I think it'd be cool to try and find places in Hawaii where like they're still like religious according to like their old ways. Like the, all like the traditional type mm-hmm. places. Like I'm sure you could find some stores where it's like an old lady that just makes like hand carved statues and dolls and masks and, and necklaces and stuff that's like traditional. That would be pretty sick. I like I like uh, their style of tattoos. Yeah, very cool style. Yep. Sweet. Yeah. And then uh, the other question is, what would you actually do to stay in a relationship? <laughs> <laughs> like, what's all like? Would you walk five hundred miles, and would you walk five hundred more? That kind of thing. Yes, of course. You know, definitely would. Uh. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, uh, I mean, I've been married for almost ten years, and there's there's a lot I've done to stay in my relationship. <laughs> I didn't really know how to answer the question. Did you have like to act a, like a dog at any point, or no, <sighs> no? Okay, that's no. good. I did. Uh, I I went online because I'm like, what have people done for love? Right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> <laughs> I read some pretty crazy stories, man. I, I read about a guy that like. His wife left him, and he was, like, the member of this this small church. And so they were like, well, you guys went to, like, couples therapy and stuff, right? And he's like, yeah. And he's like, then it must be the devil. We have to perform an exorcism. So he, they, him and the pastor kidnapped his wife <laughs> and tried to perform an exorcism on her at the church against her will. Like, <laughs> Of course. I mean, the devil's inside of her. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and there was this one guy that that uh, his girlfriend left him and got a new apartment. So he like went to her apartment one night and then rubbed shit all over her apartment door, set himself on fire and then stood in the window, like dancing <laughs> saying, I'm the devil now. I'm the devil now. <laughs> yeah. He was uh, he was arrested. <laughs> it's really burned. I'm like these are two things I definitely wouldn't do to try and stay in a relationship. Yeah, <laughs> or try to do, you know, do for love. I mean, but. would you guys do the whole boombox at at night, throwing rocks on a girl's window? Would you do that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't think it would actually work. No, no you do. <laughs> do you remember when I had a crush on that? Uh, crap, what's her name? Uh, dang it, dude! <laughs> I gotta look this up. <laughs> Just super hot chick that uh, we were in high school with, and uh, I, I had like a super huge crush on her. You guys remember Abby? Abby Harrison? Yeah. You know, like, yeah. Like she was a cool gal, but uh, <laughs> uh, her locker. She shared a locker with this girl, uh, sophomore year, and I remember I wrote a letter to this chick like some like sappy love poem thing and put it in her locker and Abby found it. And so she, and I was in the same class with Abby in math. So she came to class and she's like, Oh my God, I have a secret admirer. <laughs> I was like, Oh my God, dude. <laughs> like I didn't put my name on it. Cause I was trying to be like, all oh, you know, whatever. Yeah. But did you address it to anybody? <laughs> no. <laughs> no names at all, just some love. No. Yep, just, <laughs> just <laughs> this goes out to you. <laughs> I wonder if she still thinks like like she wakes up at night and she's like, I wonder who wrote that. You know, cuz she never had any closure. I had, right. I had a secret admirer. <laughs> Somebody loved me. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I just remember you like making out with Jackie at the uh, the pool that one day. It's like, dude, my my friend's a baller, man. <laughs> it's the first time I ever made out. Yeah. <laughs> I remember like I was like, wasn't there vending machines in that room or something? 
I remember that. Yeah. yeah it was I was like, like, oh man. Like, looking back, it's like, oh, David's making out with this chick. <laughs> 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 when did this happen? <laughs> yeah, it was like a big open room, and then there was like two vending machines, but behind the vending machines, there was like a small room. A little nook area. You, yeah, like yeah. a little nook you could hide in. Gosh. And uh, yeah, and then I went there like a week later, and she was hanging out with Jameson or whatever. Like, her, like, he was like holding her leg or something, and I was like, man, what the hell? Yeah. Yeah. Easy come, easy go. Yep, true that. Yeah, I did all kinds of sappy, stupid shit for girls, man. That's how it goes. Yeah. Yeah, I remember this one time. Um, I was dating uh, Courtney at the time, which big mistake, obviously. But um, for some reason, she wouldn't go home. Like she wouldn't go to her, stay at home for some reason. And mom and dad wouldn't let her stay at our house because like you know fuck this girl you know <laughs> and uh, I'm like I'm like damn and she's like I'm walking home then well this is at the trailer park like three miles outside of town and she's walking yeah. into town so right. that's like five six miles and it's like 9 30 10 o'clock at night she's like oh I'm walking home so, so I'm over here like well fuck I can't just let this girl walk home at night by herself so I oh, walk my with God. her and we get to Austin's house at like I don't know, one, two in the morning, <laughs> go into his garage and fall asleep on his couch in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. I remember that whole like time of thinking like, damn, this girl is so stupid. <laughs> like, why? Why are you doing this? Yeah. You know? I could be sleeping in my bed right now. <laughs> I remember when I was dating Lacey, she uh you remember where Courtney lived, right? Like yeah. down the road from Austin's and like on the right or whatever. Yeah. Uh, Lacey's cousin lived in the same neighborhood and she worked at guitars overnight as a bartender. She didn't get off till like 2 a.m. or whatever. So sometimes she would have Lacey watch her kids. So one night Lacey was watching her kids and she was like, hey, like I'm watching my cousin's kids. Do you want to come hang out? And me and Ian had been drinking Mad Dog 2020, 2020. all night. <laughs> So I was hammered, dude. And then, like, she was like, come on, come hang out or whatever. And so I was like, hey, man, I'm going to hang out with my girl or whatever. And I was like, I think I had probably half a bottle left. And I had already drank a whole bottle. And I just chugged this second half of this bottle because I was like, I just want to be done with it before I take off. And then, it like, I was on my skateboard. And it's like, you know, a, a slight decline all the way down to that neighborhood. So I was, I was getting some pretty good speed. And then, like, the second half of that bottle hit me, man. I was, like, in the middle of the road, and I just got speed wobbles and just... Dude, it was like I just laid down on the ground. <laughs> like, <laughs> but I was going, like, 20 miles an hour, so it was just, like, boom. Like, Damn. And, uh, yeah, I got it. But I was, like, super drunk, so my, I didn't really feel anything. <laughs> and then I got to her. I That's got so to a her. David thing to do, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. just get up. That was crazy, right? <laughs> Yeah, I got to her cousin's house and you know we hung out and she's like oh my god and I'm like yeah it's cool and then we slept on her couch together and the next day dude I remember getting up and just like I could I could barely move my arm and leg because there was so much scabbing and like Ooh. it was oh, it was so stiff dude that sucked you did that for her <laughs> yeah <laughs> 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 Truth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, ironically she left me like two weeks later. Oh but, man, after all that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I remember that whole thing. Such a bitch, man. <laughs> Dude. Yeah. It ruined my yeah. whole summer, man. I'm friends with her on Facebook, but Yeah. That's a shitty thing to do to somebody, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think she's still with her mom's. Dr <laughs> I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say anything else. Yeah. <laughs> I won't say anything else. But I, I guess that's something. At least she's. That's the guy that she ended up being with. I guess you know. That's cool. Yeah, that's true. I think. <laughs> I think uh, yeah. Enough said. <laughs> I do remember though that that day that she broke up with me. I like. We woke up in the morning. It was like the first thing she said to me. Like, I woke up, and I'm like, oh, good morning. And she's like, I don't think we can be together. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> And then, uh, you know, I cried like a little bitch. But 
Uh, and then she's like, do you want to ride home? And I was like, no, I'll walk. And she lived out on Gateway, mm-hmm. like halfway between Neosho and Joplin. And she's like, okay. And I'm like, are you, what? <laughs> like, I was trying to, I was trying to like, you know, have a throw a pity party or whatever. But like, she just like went with it. And I'm like, fuck it. I guess I'm walking. And then I got like. Props, man. I think, Props. yeah. I think I got almost to, uh, almost to. Um, where you guys worked, uh, the the cabinet place, Twin Oaks. Uh-huh. I got almost to Twin Oaks, and my dad called, and he's like, "Hey, when are you coming home?" And I'm like, uh, "I'm I'm walking." <laughs> place you broke up with me, and he's like, "Oh man, I'll come get you." So, oh yeah, but yeah, that was God. That was a rough breakup, man. Mm-hmm. Felt bad for you, man. Yeah. I'm good now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm 30 and flirty and thriving. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> what did you do for for a woman, Kyle? Uh, I eat a Klondike bar. <laughs> <laughs> no. what, did you, what did you do for Erica Aramo? Oh, God. <laughs> I don't even want to talk about this, dude. <laughs> you ride your bike over there, right? Yeah, I rode my bike over there all the time <laughs> to hang out with her, yeah. <laughs> That's what you do. Yeah, and then she spit in my mouth. I'm editing this out of the podcast. (laughs) Do you remember that time we got in trouble with Jameson in fifth grade because of what he said that time? Wait, what did he say? He's like, he was talking to me. He's like, hey, do you ever hawk a loogie in the back of your girlfriend's mouth? Yes, (laughs) dude. That was the funniest thing. We we were laughing so hard. The teacher's like, all right, you three, come out here. Oh, my God. And we all had to write down what we were laughing about. It's like, and do you hawk a loogie in your girlfriend's (laughs) mouth? Right in that shit now. How do I spell loogie? <laughs> yeah. Dude, and then they split us all up. Like they they put like you in stars and him in tight or what? No, we were all. It was like tigers, lions, I think, and I think I was wildcats, in wildcats, right? right? Yeah. Yeah, I forgot God. we were in the same one at the beginning, and then they split us. Up. Yeah. Because yeah. that was just the most horrendous thing you could possibly think of a child right. saying, you know? Right. Loogie. Yeah, I remember you that. Learn that? Uh, <laughs> That time we were, I was standing in line and was I was with Chris Potts and Brandy Masters was in front of me and he like grabbed my hand and like slapped her butt with my hand. <laughs> oh, dude! And I was like, "What <laughs> the fuck, dude?" Like, and of course I got called up to the office and wow. stuff. Wow, you know, it's so denigrating to a woman, like or degrading, like God. But she, at least and it she, wasn't you that did it. Oh, she thought it was me. She would not let it go. Yeah, that was me the whole time. And then she started dating him. <laughs> was who was the kid? I think he was also named Chris. The one that um, we were doing the the Shirley English, and he puked all over it. <laughs> like it was the, the puke was overflowing the book and the desk. It was just fucking everywhere, dude. Yeah, bro. He just he doesn't even try to move. He just <laughs> got in the book, dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. yeah. Oh my. What was that kid's name, dude? I can't dude. remember. I I feel like that was Taylor Olson for some reason. I don't but, think it but was. Probably not. <laughs> dude, do you remember when we were uh, <laughs> we were in that same class? And wasn't it like the teacher was out of the room? She told us all to be quiet while she was gone, and like you and me were horsing around or something. And wasn't it Danny Hathaway that was like jumping all over us, or something like that? Was it Danny? I don't know. It might have been Johnny Marshbanks. Now that I think about it, but he was like yelling at us to shut up. And we we're like, dude, you shut up, man. She's not even in here. Like, I'm gonna tell her when she gets back. Like, why? Why? Ugh. Man. Okay, so this is the story I was gonna tell earlier. But you, since you brought up Brandy, I guess I'll tell the story. So, um, I was in first grade and I was riding the bus home one day and this girl that was like a fifth grader would always like talk to me on the bus and stuff for some reason. And then I ended up finding out that she's like, Oh, she wants, like someone told me, she's like, Oh, she wants to be your girlfriend, man. All this stuff. And, uh, so I think she brings up the subject or something like, okay, whatever. And she's like, okay, yeah, we're boyfriend and girlfriend and all that. And, um, maybe... I don't know. Maybe a week goes by, and 
it's just like on the bus, you know. There, I'm not really hanging out with this girl a lot. It's mm-hmm. just, you know, but for I, those ten minutes every day. Yeah. <laughs> but this one day, I learned like I learned this word. This kid's saying it, and I'm like, "Hey, what are you what are you saying?" He's like, "Porno." I'm like, "Yeah, <laughs> porno. What does that mean?" He's like, "It means naked girls." <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, porno I means naked girls. Okay. So I get off the bus and I'm walking home and this kid's like, hey, this girl wants to hang out with you. The, my quotes, girlfriend, you know, uh-huh. and I'm like, tell her porno. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the last time I ever talked to that girl. Oh but, my uh, God, dude. So in my head, I'm like, okay, that counts as a girlfriend, right? Yeah. So fast forward to fifth grade. Brandy Masters, probably top two hottest girls in our oh, class yeah. at the time. At least that's what everybody said. You know? Oh, yeah. And, you know, I was one of those guys. So, um, <laughs> yeah, in between classes one day, I'm like, hey, because our, our lockers were kind of close to each other. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I remember being fast. I'm like, I put my books in, get my other books out. I'm like, hey, Brandy, <laughs> like, do you want to be my girlfriend? She's like, girlfriend? <laughs> Have you even ever had a girlfriend before? I'm like, yeah, I had a girlfriend. <laughs> She's like, oh yeah, what's your name? And I'm like, what? What's your name? <laughs> and then like five seconds goes by, and she's like, see, you've never had a girlfriend. And I'm like, wait, what? Just because I can't say her name doesn't, you know? So after that, she just thought I was a total loser. You know? Oh man. But jokes on her because then in sixth grade, started dating Ashley. And got respect. Yeah. Ashley was hot, too. I got mine. (laughs) (laughs) Respect, that is. (laughs) Didn't get anything else. (laughs) Dude, Brandy was, like, one of the biggest tragedies of of my life. (laughs) Because I... Right? Yeah, like, I had such a huge crush on her, and it was going somewhere for a little while. And then she started, like... Like, she, cause at the time she never like wore makeup or anything. She was just, it was just brandy, man. It was all brandy. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, like one day she started coming in, like wearing makeup all the time. And, and then she started dating Chris Potts and like, yeah, okay, it was, and then the same thing with, uh, Brittany, right? Cause it was brandy and Brittany were like the top two chicks in the school. Mm-hmm. She was dating Dale and Dale and Chris were like best friends, but they were also like delinquents <laughs> at right. the time. So I was like, oh, Brandy. And Brittany gets pregnant in like junior high or something, right? Mm hmm. Ooh. Yeah, but she was, a, I think she was the first one. Yeah. Gosh. Hotties with the body feeling naughty, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Absolute. <laughs> yeah, good times, man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You remember, uh, you had that Hawaiian shirt with the wife beater, and then I copied it. Oh, my God, yeah. Yeah. I had two of them, didn't I? I had a blue one and an orange one. Something like that. I just had the orange, yeah. but yeah. I did like that orange one the best. That was nice. That was a cool style, dude. dude. It was like jersey material, too. I had like little holes in <laughs> yeah. it. it was like, yeah. And then we had those like Hot Topic necklaces. Yeah. God, dude. I see pictures back then of myself, and I'm just like, holy crap. I was like I, t- total '90s style for sure, dude. Yeah, I, I can't look at pictures of me from fifth grade and before with the spiky hair. Oh yeah, I, I fucking hate it, dude. I can't do it. Yeah. <laughs> it sucks, man. I'm like, dude, I fucking look weird. Yeah. <laughs> Big ass teeth and spiky hair. It's like, what the fuck? Can't help how you look, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Uh, All right, well, you guys want to move into Yodu? Check this out. Let's do it. Sounds Let's good. Do it. <laughs> so yo dude check this out I found out that goats can eat poison ivy did you guys know that some humans that aren't allergic can eat it well that's crazy too yeah but isn't, yeah isn't dad dad's not allergic to it he can eat it <laughs> did, did he yeah I'm pretty sure he sold me yeah that's crazy. Yeah, I need to double check with dad, but yeah, I'm pretty sure he can eat it. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, scientists don't know why like why goats can eat poison ivy, but they can. Hmm. And I saw that and thought, huh, that's that's pretty interesting. That's hella cool. Yeah. 
Um, yo, dude, check this out. Um, I can't pull it up, but Apple Arcade is getting a Mario Kart style racer, racer starring Hank Hill and pretty much all the um, King of the Hill characters, Family Guy, um, American Dad, and that one about the aliens. I forget what it's called. But, um, yeah, look up the gameplay on it. It looks really cool. It looks exactly like Mario Kart. Even the, uh, like, you know the little parachute that deploys where you can glide around and stuff? They stole that. They stole everything. But it, it looks like a pretty cool, like, game. So if you're into racers, mm. check it out. It's called uh, Warped Kart Racers. But, yeah, you can play as uh, I think I Peter. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I think I may have saw a trailer for that. <laughs> yeah, there's like Stewie, Peter, all the all the main characters. So, pretty Crazy. cool. <clears throat> uh, yo, dude, check this out. <laughs> uh, did you know that the eye is actually hollow and your pupil is not black? It's just it's clear, and you're just the the pupil is just a hole in the front of your eye into the rest of your eye, and it like it's like a focal lens that goes back to your ocular nerve like in the back of your eye wow and have you ever seen a floater like uh-uh. little uh little squiggly lines like in your vision that kind of float around <laughs> yeah those are actually fibers that make up the inside of your eye that break off and they just like float around in the liquid like the fluid crazy and eventually they settle or like decompose but yeah apparently if you have like too many of them or they're always there like you have to go to the doctor and <laughs> Get messed with, you know. They suck them out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Start licking you. Yeah. That's crazy. Squiggly eye. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's an episode of Family Guy, actually, where, like, he's got, like, a little squiggly in his eye. It's got a little face on it. Yeah. And he's like, where are you going? I'm trying to look at you, but every time I look, you move. <laughs> it's like, it's so hard to focus on him. Do you guys ever get those? Mm-hmm. Very rare, but yeah. I, I don't think I've ever had one. Mine's, like, all the time. Especially really? if I if I'm in like a like I can't really notice it now, but if I'm in the car on a bright day and the sky's blue, it's like constant, dude. Because like the the brightness makes it so obvious. I'm hoping I don't have a problem. <laughs> well, you got blue eyes, right? Uh huh. Are your eyes sensitive to light in general? Yeah, mostly I'd say. Yeah, same here. Yeah. I remember getting those flashes as a kid from a photograph. Blinded me every oh, time, dude. Same. It's like after the first one, it's just like I'm just blind. <laughs> <laughs> They're like stare at the camera, and you're like, where? Uh, do you guys ever like? Have you guys ever had an ocular migraine where like part of your vision goes like blind, and it, uh. it looks like you got like somebody took a picture right here or something? Like you can't see up. anything out of the corner of your eye, no matter where you look. I haven't had that. That's crazy. It's a pretty freaky sensation, dude. Like, all of a sudden, it's like like lightning in your vision or something. Like, And it can happen anywhere. It could happen, like, here or here or, like, underneath. Like, if for me, it happened from, like, basically the, the bridge of my nose down. I couldn't see anything. And <laughs> no. I was laying in bed, and I was looking at my phone, and, like, Mandy was asleep. And all of a sudden, I noticed that I couldn't see parts of the screen. And I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> and then I close my eyes and like it's like it's like yeah when you catch a glare from a car or a, a photo or something like flash from a picture it's like you got that f- like and I could see that flash in my vision I was like that's weird and then like 30 minutes later it had gone away but my head just started hurting so bad and I like ended up googling it being like yeah it's it's pretty normal but, damn yeah one night uh, I, had, I woke up at like one o'clock in the morning <clears throat> and I opened my eyes to go to the bathroom or whatever, and I noticed that I couldn't see out of one of my eyes. And I was freaking out, dude. And yeah. It was like, it was just one of my eyes, it was completely black. And I woke Rachel up. I'm like, Rachel, I'm blind in one eye. And she's like, I don't fucking care, dude. Go to sleep. Like, Rachel, you're so evil, dude. Like, it was so important to me. But I, I just was like, all right, whatever, dude. We're gonna go back to sleep. When woke back up and I had vision. I was, I was oh so stoked. Oh my god, it freaked me out, though, dude. I was like, not like this. I think it's <laughs> funny. Not like these. It's, <laughs> it's funny how like quick you are to wake up. Your, your partner when something freaks you out like I remember one time I went to Warp Tour 
and I was in a mosh pit and I like th- threw my arm back and I caught somebody's fist right on my elbow Ooh. and it like hyper extended my arm, put me out for the whole day, dude. It hurts so bad. And I didn't know if I broke something or tore something cause I just didn't go to the doctor, but I woke up the next day and my arm from like the shoulder down, I couldn't feel it. It like just wasn't there. And I was like, Oh my God. And it was the first time that ever happened to me. So I didn't know it was like a normal thing. So I was like waking Mandy up and I'm like, I can't feel my arm. I can't feel my arm. Like, you already have like, anxiety. So. Yeah, dude. So I'm freaking out. And then like I could slowly start to feel certain sensations come back. And then I was like, wait, I think I'm okay. And she's like, dude, that is like, that happens to everybody. And I was like, what? Like, I've never, never felt that in my life. And I just hurt my elbow super bad. So I'm like, oh, oh my God. That's never happened to me before. But really? I had like hard trauma to my arm. Oh, never well, what I say, and I broke my, completely destroyed yeah. my elbow, my hand. But, well, it wasn't trauma. It was just the way I was sleeping. Like, sometimes I'll wake up and like, you know, my whole forearm is right. just completely numb. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Mandy, look. <laughs> yeah. But apparently that's, that's a normal thing. So. Well. I had a thought. Um, so you know how like there's like the theory of like multiverse and like there could be like different versions of you, different you know, mm-hmm. everything could be the same, but one thing is different. So, <clears throat> what if instead of your anus, it was called my anus? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Universe just like ours, but instead people are calling it my anus instead. Think about that. Yeah, there's a little nugget to take home for you. Yeah. <laughs> and that's a good ending thought for the episode, yeah. Connor. Your anus could be my anus. <laughs> <laughs> and until next time, <laughs> this has been Crashing with Friends. Bye. Hope you guys have a good rest of your week. Bye. It's gonna read. <laughs> <laughs>